All right, so let's go. Let's let's go down the list of classic titles. Harrison Ellen Shaw has himself. It's a long list. Helped engineer. Yeah, it is right. Let's start. Let's <laughs> let's uh, let's go with the ones people know and recognize. The black hole. Charlie, Charlie. There is an inexorable force in the cosmos where time and space converge. A place beyond man's vision, but not his reach. It is the most mysterious and awesome point in the universe. Where the here and now may be forever. On my ship, you ask. It is unavoidable. Moving through space, swallowing everything in its path, radio waves, light. Are you programmed to speak? Even planets and stars. That madman is headed straight for the black hole. What'll we do? We wait. reminds you that never put a movie into production with an ending that hasn't been determined yet. Uh, it was the opportunity uh, to work with my father that uh, attracted me to the whole thing. It was thing. good fun. It was painful. Um, and we would, he and I would go to dailies, watch dailies in the, the rushes of what had done the previous day in the theater. And then we'd walk outside of the of the building of the, at Disney and just get the giggles because it was so bad. <laughs> and... and I he'd say, "Well, we gotta let the the director know." And I go, "Well, you tell him." No, you tell him. I'm not gonna tell him. So, <laughs> you know, tell the you... director what? Like, what does he need to know that he can't see for himself that this thing is standing around with egg on their face? If you look look at that movie, mm -hmm. uh, which I did 
recently, it starts, it's so slow. You've got Ernest Borgnine, God love him, on wires, uh, you know, just doing stupid act. All right, hold up. I think that you, you, you look, you're being really hard on this movie. Maybe you should be, but you already had me enthralled. Ernest Borknine on up on wires. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what part of that do we can we not wait to see? Well, that's why that's why at a certain point, I mean, we were winging it the whole time. So we everybody was saying, well, are they going to be floating in outer space through the whole movie funny you should ask that's why when they get on board the cygnus mm -hmm. um the, the the great line that joseph bottom says as as they're getting you know sitting somewhere he goes oh we have gravity. Okay, yeah. next. <laughs> you know, it's pretty, pretty convenient. Off. It's yeah, it's pretty convenient. Pretty convenient. I mean, it was us. <laughs> and then we had, uh, of course, Maximilian Shell, yes, who, uh, Academy Award winner, but somehow got the crazy idea because his alter ego was Maximilian the robot just, every day was another adventure yeah the captain nemo in space i there's moments about it that there's moments in it though that i really i love and it's kind of taken on a pop culture nature all its own it's like a typhoon of pop cultureness now but there's that moment where uh you know um maximilian's at the not the droid not the not maximilian the robot but maximilian shell shell the actor is at the command console and he's like E squared equals C squared equals sin squared equals apocalypse squared. It's like so funny. He does the. It's, like, it's everything you know, so dramatic, but yeah. it's still nothing happens. Yeah. You know, there's, well, we had to kind of invent a fight between. Uh, it was so. It was, he he had won the Oscar for Judgment at Nuremberg, and we'd seen him in a lot of movies since being really, really good. This isn't, I wouldn't say this is an exception to me. I really, I think he's fun in this movie, but he does start really strong and then kind of like dial it back. So like he'll turn with a lot of force and be like, on my ship you ask, <laughs> but if you want to... It's, it's because Go right they, ahead. They, they, God bless them. They had nothing to work with. Right. The script was dreadful at the start. It mm. was, you know, how many rewrites and other writers have to come in. And uh. the studio had committed because of Star Wars. This is going to be the next Star Wars done by Disney. It's a recipe for disaster. It is. But you know what I loved about it? I loved your work. I loved your father's work. I love the art design. I love the look at the ship. As impractical as some people want to criticize it for being, I love it. I love the way it looks. It's got like sort of a gothic feel. It's got a feel yeah. feeling of like loneliness, like past history that's since evaporated. There's also that great moment where there's in a they're in that dining room. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> there'll be no more unescorted excursions aboard and then he goes what does he say he comes in he's like but how did you oh yes <laughs> yes P you share with the robot and then he goes extraordinary <laughs> I told you not to go anywhere are you <laughs> you know it's like, he's so good he's so good I mean yeah, I, well he's he's struggling to make it work and then at yeah. one point uh, he, he has to go in, through, and beyond. And he's not pointing at what we're going to put in, so he goes over here like this. So we're juggling the back yeah. to match the live action. No, I love that. I love that moment where he kind of like points. He's like, we're going through the black hole. Over, over. Through and, yeah, it's, here it is. Here it is.
And you know, you would think we did it the proper way because you do this before this, and mm. we still it was hard to get Mr. Shell to take it seriously. Was he not taking it seriously? Judgment of Nuremberg, and now you're going to deal with uh, two robots that just look like crap. Yeah, you know you've got to, he, and so they're floating. And when yeah. they, when you walk somewhere, you got to kind of walk around them. <laughs> You know, I know what you're talking about logistically, and it's it may have been hard for him to get his head around it. But I mean, this he had already seen that these movies were were succeeding with high caliber talent. Like the Hammer Squad was in Star Wars, you know, and he obviously had worked with some of those guys. And you know, I mean, these these things are not completely out of the ordinary. But I love that um, I love that scene when he's like. The time has come to liquidate our guests. <laughs> He's saying that to Maximilian. Great design on that robot, by the way. I love it. And the fact that it like floats. And then he turns to Yvette and he's like, Tell me from Maximilian. I'd be like, Hold up. You just signed everyone's death warrant, you crazy motherfucker. <laughs> now you want us to protect you? The ship seats five. You're out. <laughs> you know what I have to say, though? It must have been awesome. To step on a set where you've got Anthony Perkins, Ernest Borgnine, Academy Award for Marty, and you've got Maximilian Show. And incredible. You. Yeah, time machine. <laughs> Was she wearing a wig in that? Or did she cut her hair? No, she cut her hair. Yeah. Because it, the whole thing was, well, if she's going to be weightless, right? she has long hair, how are we going to deal with that? And it's like, if that's all we have to worry about. Yeah, yeah. Cut her hair. Well, she but wasn't a, too happy about it. She wasn't? Did she resist that? Well, she was not too happy about a lot of things. Yeah, One yeah. is that she was a bit of a prima donna and i can't blame her i mean she and it was just oh god i'm sorry to bring up all these memories with you this is peter coin from the godfathers nmosd is a killer don't find a cure for nmosd and with it cancer please go to the guffy jackson foundation and donate today thank you